In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make feta cheese cultured with kefir. I want to show you the whole process from making the kefir to milking the cow to making the cheese to having a cheese that's ready for your table. In the first half of the video, you'll see me make kefir, milk the cow, and get the milk ready to make the cheese. This group of milk way faster than I do. Mm. Thank you. 
did we just milk Belinda? We, uh, Mr. Ruffer did the California mastitis test just to make sure the milk is clean because we don't want to have a problem with our cheeks. Okay, but an, a second way to check your milk also is to strain it. So we're going to strain this milk. My strainer is about a quart strainer. And I use these, these filters. I really like to uh, use these white filters even though I don't use many disposable products because I always can tell what's going on with the milk. Okay. Okay really clean milk will strain very fast like that also is another sign it looks like we're going to use a half a gallon today for our feta but you know one thing on cheese recipes that was really hard when i was a beginner is you know it calls for a certain amount of milk and i just like to milk the cow and make the cheese so i don't always know exactly how much milk i'm going to have so um i think you know you kind of have to and i you have to guess and kind of have an idea of uh, the method you want to use. I don't want to use, you know, I, I can't use exact measurements because, you know, I always make cheese straight from the cow pretty much. And the chickens will get the excess. So I want to show you the filter. It's beautiful white, really, really pretty. I'm going to put my half gallon of milk in this pan. I know a long time ago when people made cheese that they did not have exact measurements. And our kefir is fresh from this morning. I'd really like to get wooden um, buckets or bats to make cheese. Gonna stir it. And this is summer, this is July in Texas, and we're in my milk room, and so it is very, very warm. So we're just going to uh, put the lid on it. We're going to set it aside. Now, if this were um, cooler temperatures, I would put a towel over it. Okay, we're going to set our half gallon of raw milk with our two tablespoons of kefir. We're going to set it aside for one hour. And in this hour, I've got to clean up this milk room and clean up the milking station. Okay, I wanted to tell you what the temperature of this um, raw milk and two tablespoons of kefir, I wanted to tell you what the temperature of it is because a lot of you will be um, starting from cold milk or milk that you buy, but this was just fresh from the cow. And the temperature, that, and also in my milk room, it's about 90 degrees, but the milk is about 88 to 90 degrees. We're back. It has been an hour that our raw milk and our two tablespoons of kefir have been culturing. So now it's time to add the rennet. So I use Walkerin. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but I got it at cheesemaking.com. That's the site that Ricky Carroll uh, runs. I've been ordering from them for many years, but I really am anti-GMO and very organic and I find that this is the best rennet that I can find. Now it is very, very strong and I keep it in the freezer and it says you, you need to follow the instructions for each recipe of course but it says 1 16th teaspoon per two gallons of milk. Okay for our recipe today we just have half gallon of raw milk and um, 
you also need to buy these little tiny teaspoons. They work really well. But since there's one sixteenth for two gallons, that would mean one thirty second teaspoon for one gallon. And we have half, so we're going to do one sixty fourth. But raw milk, uh, when you're using fresh raw milk, you can usually use about 10 to 20% less rennet. And I'm going to put a link below in the description to an article on cheesemaking.com um, that you can read all about that. But I'm going to use just a really scant 164th. And I keep this little jar by my cheese making supplies and I just um, have some water, non-chlorinated water. And it's just a tiny, tiny bit. And we're just going to add that to the water. Stir it up. You want it to dissolve. You might want to let it sit a few minutes, but it looks like it dissolved. Okay, I'm going to use, I like to use a spoon like this that has little holes. And I like to pour my rennet just through the spoon over my cheese. So you want to, especially with raw milk, I already see the butter fat rising. So I'm just going to slightly stir it up and down, but you don't want to do too much because it's starting to thicken. And once you set it aside to form a curd, you want to keep it very still and not disturb it. Okay, we're going to put the lid on. It's about 90 degrees in here for one more hour. Okay, it's been about an hour and we are back and we are checking on the cheese. And it looks like it's, uh, you know, it's getting very firm that it's formed a curd. But before I cut it, I really like to see a little bit of liquid in it where it's pulled a little bit away from the pan. So I think I'm going to leave it a little bit longer before we cut the curd. Maybe like, I'm gonna check back in about 10 minutes. I see a film of liquid on the edges, see? Perfect. And you can actually see a little bit on top of the curd. So now we are going to cut it. I like to cut it in about two inch curds first, then I'll go down to one inch and then to half inch. Like maybe letting it rest five minutes in between each cutting. I cut it with just the spoon. Uh, I do have a curd knife, but it's about two inches. See, something like that. I don't like to cut it too small too quickly because I like the way to expel from the curd kind of slowly because I feel like it makes a moisture cheese in cheese making. So I'm going to let this stay like at the two inch curds about five minutes and it's not very deep maybe two inches so I'm not even going to, most of the time I would cut them horizontally but I'm not going to since we just used half gallon. Okay we'll be back in five minutes. Okay now we're going to cut it on these like one inch curves. This is just super easy. So you know we've only been at cheese making since we've opened how many minutes? Two hours, two hours and 30 minutes. And this is, goes really, really quickly. See, look at the curd, it's really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna let this sit and let more whey expel from the curd. Now we're going to check our curd. Okay, and I think I'm going to stir it. a few minutes and let more whey release. Sometimes I even take a, a really large whisk like this. I think I'll do that today. And I'll just kind of use the whisk to 
cut the curd smaller. Anytime you're stirring the curds, you should always be very gentle. Isn't that pretty? So the whole process, cutting the curd and stirring, is just about 15 minutes. And it's still around 90 degrees, so I didn't, you know, they're still very warm. Okay, I'm going to use these cute little cheese molds from cheesemaking.com. They're heart-shaped. I have two of them. I'm just gonna ladle the curds in those two. I'm, I'm making myself a little feta heart and my daughter's coming this weekend. So I'm gonna make her one because she loves feta. So I have my milking pail with a screen on top and you know it's really good for uh, to use to, to keep the whey as it drains off the cheese because I, I don't waste anything. We will use the whey for something Okay, so as these drain, you just keep adding on top and it will drain pretty quickly. You also can use the little uh, green strawberry baskets also work. I have this cheese mold also. I think I'll just go ahead and add, make a third one. Here are three molds that we ladled our curds into that um, are going to stay here and drain for the next four to six hours. So we will be back in about six hours. Okay, here we're back. Um, it's been a little bit longer than six hours because it's at the end of the day and I've been gone. But anyway, there are our cheese molds and now we're gonna put them in a baking dish. Okay, that's empty the molds. I'm going to spike it with. Okay, now we're gonna, I like to sprinkle them with kosher salt. And you can use like, maybe a tablespoon. I'm just gonna use like a teaspoon for each mold. I don't like them too salty. You also can make a brine, which just look at cheesemaking.com, but I like to do it this way. kosher salt. Okay, we're going to leave these covered in this baking dish for 24 hours. They're really pretty. I'm going to take these in the house where it's a little cooler. It's about 90 degrees in my milk room, but we're going to leave these for 24 hours and I will show you our final result.